the Indians and Ethiopians of ancient Palestine. Universal Center for Renovation, where the Word is made flesh, presents historical and biblical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. NLT, 2 Corinthians 10 and 2. We use the Lord's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. When two people discuss the Bible as it pertains to history, sometimes it seems that two conversations are taking place. This is because there often are two conversations taking place in the minds of the two people speaking, meaning there is no similarity in the mental visual imagery. And this is because where you start would generally influence where you end. Different cosmologies mean different eschatologies. Different genesises mean different interpretations of the present. Different interpretations of the present means different interpretations of the future. Nowadays, whenever you speak about the Middle East, most, not all, but most people think that the current demographic and present appearance of the current populations represents a historic continuum, and they will defend that perspective because it has contemporary political and economic implications. Not only that, but what people also fail to understand is the impact that the Gutington School of History, a group of historians associated with a particular style of historiography located at the University of Gutington in the late 18th century, has on our modern and current way of thinking about universal or global human history. A certain cosmology or worldview was published and circulated out of the Gutingen School of History. The historians of this school sought to write a new universal history and were responsible for coining scientific racism terminologies of race. New terms like Caucasian or white race, Mongolian or yellow race, Malayan or brown race, Negroid or black race, and American or red race were disseminated out of the Gutingen School of History. In 1795, one such historian, Johann Blumenbach, the German physician, naturalist, physiologist, and anthropologist, established a five-part naming system to describe what he called the five principal varieties of humankind, but one species. Based on craniometry or skull anatomy, in his view, humans could be divided into varieties. Only later in his work did he adopt the term races. But he was aware that a clear separation was difficult. All national differences, quoting Blumenbach, all national differences in the form and color of the human body run so insensibly by so many shades and transitions one into the other that it is impossible to separate them by any but very arbitrary limits. So Blumenbach, while creating a system of human variety based on skull measurements, readily admitted that a clear separation was difficult and form and color transitions one and to the other, that it is impossible to separate them unless it was done arbitrary. French aristocrat Arthur de Goubenlaw added to Blumenbach's race theory. Goubenlaw 
theorized that different races originated in different areas. This was his geographical race theory. From these writers, we get a revisioned Weltanschauung, or worldview, that is not based on biblical-centered universal history, but a secular reimagined story of universal history, which also co-opted or misappropriated biblical history's personages. Johann Blumenbach, along with racialist historian Christoph Mienus and Otto de Gubenlau, have had an immense impact on our contemporary perception of how we see the world and the people that live in it, and most importantly, our language that we use to describe the world and its people. So, while we are well aware of the race and human variety theories that mainstream academia continues to support, and in turn the theories that make up our contemporary minds, our videos discuss the world as it was before these human variety theories or race theories. Interestingly enough, portions of the same academic community that continues to support and publish these theories and capitalizes off these theories now consider these theories discredited and outdated models. Not to be defeated, the racialists have come up with new models of human variety hierarchy, such as some people's contemporary use of human genetic sciences haplogroups. But that is for another time. But still, it remains difficult to discuss actual universal biblical-centered world history when the only lingua franca or common language that we have to discuss all of world history, including the history of the world which preceded and succeeded the 18th century, is the language and terminology of the 18th century racialists of the Göttingen School of History. Terms like white man or white race, black man or black race, brown man or brown race, Caucasian, Negroid, Mongoloid, although are commonly and casually used in everyday dialogue in the public, private, and personal spheres. And while these terms are used in the global societies of our contemporary world, these are not biblical terms. These are not the terms used by historians of antiquity or classical history, or any time before the 18th century, to describe tribes, ethnic groups, or families of the earth. Anyone who is researching and studying the ancient history of Israel soon finds that there is a dearth in antiquity and classical history of the actual word Israel. This does not mean that the people of Israel didn't exist, but you should keep in mind that Israelites were not always called Israelites, but they were known by different appellations and different names. This plays throughout the length of linear progressive history, not just for Israel, but all the families of the earth. The etymology of the word Israel is surrounded by contention. Looking into the etymology, you discover that it is considered a Greek transliteration. Bon Jovi said it best in the lyrics of the song, Wanted Dead or Alive. It's all the same, only the names will change. As William Shakespeare's popular adage states, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. In our previous videos, Western Eastern Ethiopians, Israelites in the Americas and Jerusalem, Israelites were called Ethiopians, Indians, Phoenicians, and Syrians. Who were the Ethiopians of Homer, Cush of Africa, or Israel of Joppa? And Perseus found her among the black Indians, Andromeda, at Port of Joppa, Tel Aviv, Israel. We expounded on a very important but little known fact that Israelites of the southern kingdom were called Ethiopians, 
and the Israelites of the northern kingdom were called Endians by ancient writers. Why is this important? It is important because when researching antiquity and ancient history, you will not always encounter the descendants of Israel in historical literature called by the name Israel or Israelites. In this video, we will explore this more. 